What started as an invasion of Ukraine is fast turning into a battle to keep the home turf safe. The nature of the Ukraine war has undergone some pretty dramatic changes. As part of its strategy to fight back, Ukraine is doing the one thing that the West had been very squeamish about. Instead of conquering more Ukrainian territory, the Russian forces at this moment are busy guarding the Moscow skies. There have been a spate of cross-border ground and drone attacks deep inside the Russian territory. Ukraine appears to be implementing the old adage that the best defense is a good offense. So how successful has Kiev been in pushing back at the Russian forces? And how is Russia planning to blunt the Ukrainian counter-offensive this spring? Our next port gets you the details. The port city of Berdyansk is nowhere near the front lines. But on the 2nd of June, it was rocked by an explosion. This drone footage, released by the Freedom of Russia Legion, an anti-Kremlin group supported by Ukraine, shows sites from inside the Russian territory of Belgorod, with the claim that Russia's military equipment is being destroyed. On the 31st of May, at 3 a.m. in the early hours of the morning, a Russian oil refinery in the Krasnodar region lit up with a massive blaze. A Ukrainian kamikaze drone had been used to spark the inferno. Fighters were being pumped into Russia with overt and covert support from Ukraine for the purpose of cross-border raids, insist that this is a tactic that will be repeatedly employed in the coming days. We, the Freedom of Russia Legion, are now near the border of our motherland. Very soon, we will be advancing again into Russian territory to bring freedom, peace and tranquility. Krevoron, which is a Russian town close to border with Ukraine, is only the beginning. Because of the cowardice of Putin's military jackals, we have received many trophies. Thanks to this, we will be able to arm more of our comrade in arms. We are going to liberate the whole of Russia, from Belgorod to Vladivostok, so that the white blue white flag of freedom will be hoisted in Moscow. But it hasn't just been the military targets and infrastructure, but even the posh civilian buildings in the upscale neighborhoods of Moscow that have come under attack. Russian media, which has remained tight-lipped about the reverses it has suffered in the battlefield, began to beam images of the drone strikes in Moscow. Despite a string of daring attacks that Ukraine has managed to execute inside the Russian territory, it is important to highlight that there is simply no equivalence to the scale of the devastation that Russia is even now able to unleash on Ukraine at will. Moscow has continued with its relentless missile and drone strikes on Ukraine. Wave after wave of air attacks have rained down on the Ukrainian capital. Despite the best anti-air defense systems from the West, Moscow still dominates the skies over Kiev. Stepping out onto the streets of the Ukrainian capital is fraught with danger. Every time the sirens blare, people rush to the subway stations to take refuge. For children, locating the nearest bomb shelter and taking refuge has now become a part of their school curriculum. On the battlefields, Russia is now pumping in over 7,000 Chechen fighters to bolster its defences against the Ukrainian counter-offensive. It has lined up anti-tank Dragon's Teeth to slow down the Ukrainian tanks. All along the territory that Russia now controls, Moscow has installed fortifications to repel the fire from the Western weapons. Volodymyr Zelensky is hopping through the European capitals to get more weapons, to get the coveted membership into the elite club of the NATO military alliance. But on the battlefield, it is the common soldiers who are trudging through the slush and dirt, battling for their lives and trying to evade death. 